Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for being you. It is so cool to get to be able to spend time with you every week here on the radio, the podcast, whatever format you might be listening to us on. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Today, we want to talk about growth, specifically the growth of your company. How can you grow your company? How can you expand it? How can you cause your company to have massive, even explosive growth? Sounds kind of exciting, doesn't it? So let's uh, dive right into it. First, I do want to tell you a little bit about the Complete Man program that I'm going to be speaking in in April. Um, As the details come in, I want you to know more about that, but it's going to be a great opportunity for hundreds of speakers to come together and really share with you, um, those of you that are men, those of you that have men in your life that you care about, um, really, really help give some insights and help into being the best that you can be. Um, Secondarily, I want to tell you again about the amazing opportunity. I can't even believe that, that this is even possible. Can you imagine having as your coach a multi-billionaire. Errol Abramson has an opening for just a couple of people. I mean, he doesn't work. He's going to work with like maybe five people total. But he's going to pour all that he's learned in the billions that he's made in business into you. Two calls a week. Be available via, you know, via email 24-7 to answer your questions. I tell you what, I can't even begin to tell you the number of people that I've heard stories of and all the things that I've heard about for people who have taken their business way over a million dollars. Not to mention, of course, the 47 businesses that Errol himself has successfully started or acquired and sold off for more than a million, in some cases more than a billion dollars. If you want a coach, Trust me, Errol is the coach for your business you want. Uh, Feel free to reach out to me on Facebook, Steve Kidd. I would love to talk to you in more detail about how you can do some coaching with Errol. Today, you know, I mean, and the coaching with Errol is such a perfect lead into this because today we want to talk about growth, the growth of your company. Um, Now, I'm going to start off with some basic things, and the basic part of this is you. You're never going to go someplace higher than what you're willing to conceive and believe and work on being able to get to. You know, you're not going to just wake up tomorrow morning and decide, you know what I want to do? I'm going to climb, climb Mount Everest, and then just go over to Mount Everest and poof, climb up to the very tippity top of the Mount Everest, never having done any climbing before. The same thing is true in your business. Your business is poised, it's ready, it's excited, it wants to grow. But now you have to do the work. And that starts on having yourself physically, mentally, spiritually ready to be able to grow. That's important. You've got to be the best you in order to put the best company out there because it starts from you. Then secondarily, uh, you know, we need to be clear who we're serving. We can't be wishy-washy. I hear all the time from people and I understand why we all fall into this trap of, you know, yeah, but this is something that everybody wants, you know. Uh, I happen to be in a market where 80% of all the people in the world surveyed will tell you that they want to write a book and less than, you know, less than 5% ever do. It's like 3.2% or something like that ever actually write their book. So conceivably, you know, uh, you know, seven out of 10 ish or something like that. Um, seven and a half, actually, I suppose that would be out of 10 people that you meet, uh, want to write a book. And so you would say, hey, that's a huge marketplace. Well, 
as true as that is, what I can tell you absolutely is, is that you have to be more focused than that. In fact, Seth Godin said that um, what you want to do is take a look at your market and define what is the least viable audience you can reach. Meaning, you know, if you could sustain your business with doing amazing business for one person, that would be the ultimate, you know? And then if it takes 100, then pour into, serve those 100 people. Share with them tips. I mean, think about it. How much more, if you were living a massively growing, incredibly successful lifestyle, how much more free would you be to give away, you know, even free information via your blog posts and your Facebook lives and those kind of things to people because of the fact that there were that very small group of them that you loved on really, really intensely. Um, my dad, you know, actually for his doctoral thesis, wrote a book about the small church. And uh, one of the things that he talks about in that is that one of the advantages the small church has is that sense of family. You know, that old saying, uh, I can say anything I want to about my brothers, but if you say anything about them, we're going to have to fight. Same thing's true in this community that you're creating. And the smaller that it can be, again, viable, so that you're growing and having the level of success your business can have. Now, what I can also tell you, you know, when you adopt the Nike model of reducing your target market down to a single person and defining them that specifically, what I can tell you is, is that actually helps you reach more people. When you are saying something very targeted, very specific to a person, you reach more people. Think about all the different communities that you're part of um, and that you may not be their specific target demographic. Maybe you are uh, spiritually, racially, gender-wise, age-wise, not exactly in that perfect market, but that doesn't make what they teach invalid or even that it didn't potentially help you double, triple, quadruple your business from the information that they gave you. So it's really important that we know who we're talking to. Clarity is so powerful. So we're clear about who we are. We're clear about who we're meant to serve. Then we're clear with our messaging. We're clear with those kind of things. It really becomes imperative that we are focused when we begin to look on and start thinking about growth, about really growing our business, when we get serious about it. Now, I want to let a few of you off the hook because there are some of you that your business is doing good. Um, and maybe when you're sitting around thinking about it, maybe you have bigger dreams. But the fact of the matter is, is that you're doing really, really well. Um, I saw one of the most insightful things on Shark Tank the other day, and that was one of the sharks told the person, it's like, you know, you have a really great business. You are living an amazing lifestyle, and your business is continuing to grow. But honestly, sometimes that's the best thing you can have. Not all businesses are meant to have hundreds or thousands or millions of dollars poured into them um, and have them explode into multi-billion dollar companies. Some of them are just really great businesses. There are a lot of businesses, even in your own local community, that have been there for years. Think about all of the, you know, all the little shops, all of the farms that have gone through generations of people. So many different options, so many different examples of things like that, that, um, you know, most farmers, just using that as an example, 
uh, you know, they'd love for their farm to be bigger. They'd love to make more money, all of that kind of stuff. But the truth of the matter is, is, you know, they're not going to buy up like the whole state of South Dakota. It's not real. It's not rational. And really, you know, they don't really want that. Not really at the core of them. Now, I'm not saying that this is for everybody, but some of you, you need to stop, take a deep breath, and realize how great you have it. And then just grow your business as it's growing naturally as you're doing what you're doing. For others of you, there are some little things that you're not doing that can so massively increase the growth of your business. So what are the excuses? What is that wonderfully sexy excuse that we make? Come on, we all do it. To excuse us for not maximizing who we are and how we show up in the world. I've got them. I'm sure you do too. We all do. Again, no judgment. Um, and maybe, maybe again, like I was saying just a minute ago, maybe the excuse isn't just a really good excuse. Maybe it's really the core of who you are reining you in and keeping you in the lane that you really should and more importantly want to be in. For others of you, it's as simple as the fact of you just need some knowledge. I mean, because after all, knowledge is power, right? When we know better, we do better. When we get some simple strategies, some clues, because success leaves clues. And when we can take a hold of those, we can make such an incredible difference. And here's the key. We talked before about knowing who your target client is, and we talked about focus, but the real big piece of that is your message, your product, your goods, your service was never meant for you anyway. We are all here to do that thing that we're meant to do in the world because of the people that it's going to help, that it's going to impact. It can be as simple as, um, you know, the little plastic thingy on the top of your shoestrings? Now, I don't know if you've ever tried to relace your shoe when that's fallen off. But if you have, you know what I'm talking about. That little plastic doodad at the top of the... Uh, at the top of the shoestring makes, you know, tying your shoes as well as just lacing up your shoes so much easier. That makes my life easier, makes so many people's lives easier. So I'm not necessarily talking about the fact that you've got to dive deep into somebody's soul and help them, you know, find religion or, uh, you know, alter their whole reality or anything like that. It may be something as simple as the hula hoop that's given so many people joy and some people have even used it as exercise equipment. And that would be enough because you're being you. You're doing that thing that you're meant to do in the world. There are so many different options for all the people that we are as well as that we meet. And in the end, it's really just about doing that thing with our whole heart to serve the person that we're meant to serve. You've all heard me say it a million times before, and I'm going to say it again. That thing that you do, there is somebody right now on Google, you know, because there's so many people in the world, right? They're on Google right now. They're typing away, tippity 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 tippity, right? Searching for the answer to that thing that you do with grace and ease. That thing that you probably do so well that you've discounted it. So when we have those things in mind, when we know clearly who we are, we know clearly who our target client is, what their needs are, and we're focused especially focused on helping them and making their lives a better place. 
we are then in the right place so that now as I bring on our experts today, and they're amazing people, they've got some great stuff for you. As I bring them on, our hearts, our minds, and our souls are in the right place to be able to expand, to be open and available enough for the learning, the messages that are going to come our way today as we listen in, as we learn secrets, tips, tricks, and strategies on how to really, truly grow, how to have expansion, explosive growth in our business, so that in all that we do, we are making the biggest impact we can, that we are helping our families live the best life they can, so that we are making our little corner of the world a better place. And for some of us, our little corner of the world is literally the whole globe. Whatever that might be. We know that when we embrace the best version of ourselves, we are also embracing living as a thriving entrepreneur. I want that for you so much. And I know you do too. So let's take a quick commercial break and let's jump into it with some really great off, uh, great guests as we talk to you about growing your business on Thriving Entrepreneur. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because... It serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to wehelpyouthrive.com, check us out, and find out how you can be a best selling author. Today. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. Are you ready? Let's jump right into it. All right, entrepreneurs, let's get some help building a higher level of business. Doesn't that sound good to all of us? Today, I'm joined by JB Glossinger, and he is the morning coach. He's going to help us focus on building a higher level of business. Hey, JB, how are you doing today? Fantastic, Steve. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. And do you prefer going by JB or James? JB, please. Yeah, James okay. is my father. All right, gotcha. Um, I'm a Star Wars fan. Luke, you are my father, right? <laughs> perfect. All right. So tell us a little bit about who you are. Well, I, you know, I've been, it's, it's been an interesting kind of journey. I was in corporate for a long time, 15 years, and uh, found myself sitting in an office. Uh, my parents were blue collar workers and I was sitting in an office making 10 times what they were making, staring at the computer, wondering what the heck I was doing, and feel, feeling really guilty about not being satisfied with my life. Um, you know, I made it to the board of directors, 35 years old, had, had found that success in corporate, but was absolutely miserable and really couldn't figure out why. And I was beating myself up, you know, saying, you know, there's no reason. You don't have a right to feel miserable, <laughs> right? And uh, I decided that I was going to make a change. So I wrote a book, spent all my money on it, uh, did what all smart entrepreneurs do. I quit my job and literally lost everything. I lost my house. Um, we, we were just a, a minute from bankruptcy, just a minute, a minute from bankruptcy. And I, I really, uh, even though I had an MBA, um, I guess I can ship FedEx with that because I really didn't know what I was doing. And uh, it was scary. I was going to be a speaker, an author, and a consultant. I was so excited about it. Uh, my book that I spent all my money on uh, wasn't selling at all. I mean, my mom bought it, a couple friends, and, and I just totally, you know, was misguided. And a buddy of mine one night, um, drowning our sours in a, in a few beers and, and other 
alcoholic beverages said, you know, why don't you do a conference call in the morning? And I searched for a URL. This is back in 2004, 2005 early. And I found morningcoach.com. I was like, okay, this is cool. And I didn't know how to build a, a website. So I went and got a book um, back in the day at Barnes and Nobles when they had those things. And it was 24 hours how to build a website uh, using Dreamweaver software. And I had no idea even what Dreamweaver software was. And I didn't even have any money to buy it. So I ended up pirating it, <laughs> downloading it and learning how to do that, getting it on my computer and then building a uh, website over the weekend. And it was ugly. But it literally had, I think it was one of the first landing pages ever because it had, you know, put in your email and I will send you a link back to a conference call. So I used to do this conference call in the morning at 6.30 a.m. Eastern and 10.30 Eastern for the Pacific Coast. And I used to go on MySpace, really dating myself here. And I would put little things on people's page that were into motivation. I'd say, you need some motivation in the morning, come listen to me. And again, my business wasn't doing anything. I wasn't selling much. But then all of a sudden, people started listening. And the conference lines could only hold 100 people. So I didn't know what to do next. It was like, gosh, only 100 people can be on this thing. And so people were emailing that they couldn't listen. And I was just failing, like, at every aspect of life. And that's when I Google searched, you know, how do I put audio up on the internet? And I found this thing called podcasting. And when I started, literally... I had to teach people how to put it on their iPod. I was like, this is a thing, you know, you, you, you put this thing on iPods, you know, you put this audio. And so I started teaching people how to do it. And uh, iTunes was just really getting started. And I started to rank. And on January 1 of 2006, right at that end of 2005, they featured me on the homepage of iTunes. And so I went from like nobody listening to the top 25 in the world, uh, 40,000 downloads a day, and uh, everything shifted. It was crazy. And so in 2006, uh, my business started to grow. Uh, I started to change uh, things and things were working. But the problem was I still wasn't making money. I was speaking at Blog World with Tim Ferriss and Gary Vaynerchuk, become friends with a lot of cool people. But I was going broke. And so from 2005, six time period to about 2009, it was really a rough time for my family. And in 2009, I decided I couldn't do it anymore. I'd build a Joomla website with 12,000 people. Uh, it was time to go paid. And I went paid in 2009 for $20 a month and 1,237 people came with me. And the rest is history. I mean, that, that was like billions of dollars to me at that time. And I learned a lot of lessons along the way. Uh, I cried at that point because I had over 60 negative reviews on iTunes. Everybody hated me except for those 1,237 people. Uh, but they changed my life. And since 2009, I believe I'm one of the few uh, paid podcasters. I, I spoke at Harvard three months ago on, on creating educational content and moving to more to, of the Chinese model, which is a billion dollar industry over there, uh, on how to create paid content. And they had me come up and, and, and discuss some things. So, you know, here I was a guy that was broke, trying to make stuff work, do a conference call in the morning, discovered this little thing called podcasting, and it literally changed my life. Well, and you say 1,200 people, but, you know, when we do the math of 1,200 times 20 monthly, you know, it's not chump change. <laughs> no, it's great. And I think the podcast alone over this past, you know, it's been a while now, 15 years, uh, 14, I think I'm in the 14th season, it's done about 4.5 million just the podcast alone. So that's been the revenue from the subscription. So I don't know how many people have done that. I'm not bragging about that at all. I've worked really hard, but it's just, it's pretty amazing to me that a little show could generate, throw off that much revenue over all those years and really has built just a, you know, a wonderful lifestyle for me. I now have masterminds. I coach, um, I do events, I get called out for speaking. It's just, it's insane. It's just really, really crazy. So for the new entrepreneur, um, who is in that same space you are where they have lots to give or lots to say at least, um, you know, but they're never monetized. What is, you know, in 2020, maybe the smartest way to start monetizing yourself? I would, I would change your mindset about everything. So what I teach now when I talk to somebody is, look, you got to find small amounts of people. If you can find, and I build in 500. So my goal while I'm starting to do interviews and come out of the cave a little bit, because typically I play golf every day and I'm kind of semi-retired in my cave, is that, you know, I have a new material goal. I want to get a, a beach house in Indiana where I'm from and I want to buy an aircraft. In order to do that, I need to generate a million dollars annually extra 
compared to what I do. So in my business, I teach, if you want something, you got to go generate the revenue. So I have a two to five year plan to add 500 plus people into my systems, which are my masterminds and my coaching programs. And then obviously morningcoach.com, which is now $30 a month. So in order to get those 500 plus people, I have to get out there and create value for them and talk to them and, and get to know them and break it down over two to five years. So if you, and, and the way I build it, those 500 people is $2,000 annual spend with me or $167 a month. So I'm looking for 500 people that will consistently spend $167 a month or $2,000 a year with me. Now, if you break that back and you're saying you're just getting started and you're like, JB, well, you already have your business and I understand you're trying to buy this airplane, but that's not me. I'm just getting started. Well, what I would say is go find 100. Go find 100 over two to five years. And in two to five years, you now have a business that's generating, if you do 100 times 2,000, that's 200 grand a year. You're not eating at McDonald's. You've got a great career. And if you focus on two people a month, all of a sudden, providing them value and services that will add up to $2,000 a year, you can build a sustainable business. I think the problem we have right now is all the vanity metrics. Oh, I need all these Instagram people, all these Facebook people. You know, when, when we started, Steve, I told you, I'm deleting people. I'm getting rid of people. I'm, I'm, look, I don't want the vanity metrics. I want to find people that I can create real value for, bring them into a system and help them. And I have a rule in my business that I'll never hurt anybody. So I'm never going to overcharge them or upsell them or, you know, get a credit card and, and try to hurt them. I get to know my people. I just had a person from Saudi Arabia sign up. For some reason, my podcast is doing really well overseas. And I had another one for Russia and they just signed up last, last week. And I was talking to them on WhatsApp. I have a WhatsApp group and they're like, I can't believe you talked to individuals. I mean, yeah, that's what this is about. I had a plus 19 growth in January puts me right on track to my 500 around two to two and a half years. And so far this month, I'm at I plus 16. That's with losing my losing, you know, so focus on smaller numbers instead of uh, the big numbers and, and build that residual component where you provide value and build a real relationship. And you don't have to do all the crazy marketing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love marketing. I think it's great. But if you focus on the individual and you focus on a hundred people over the next two to five years, you can build a real sustainable business as an individual that's looking to help people. And so when it comes to pricing, is that where you typically would suggest a person to start is $167 a month, $2,000 a year? I, I think that's the average. You know, I have people that spend upwards 20,000 plus and I have people spend 150. So you've got to find a way to find that average. Fortunately for me, I was able to get Morning Coach to start creating the sustainability right? Which is the residual component of my business that pays the bills and the rest allows me to, to do this where I can go pay for marketing and interviews and, and Facebook ads and those things, even though I don't do hardly any interviewing. I mean, um, ads, I don't do minimal ads. I think the pricing component is, is relative to the value that you create. And again, personally, I feel uh, one of the things I do as a coach is I'll tell somebody, look, let's get on the phone and I'll, I'll do this four step process where I'll say, Hey, tell me your problems. And I'll say, okay, wow, you got some problems. What's it going to, you know, what does it mean to you if I solve those problems? And then I can put a price out there. And along that process, I do an application where I know where somebody is financially. So I never overcharge, but I'm not going to undercharge either. I'm trying to find an individual price point that works for everybody. Now, granted, morning coach is my lowest level. It's 30 bucks a month. But as you start working individually with people and you bring them into masterminds, I have one that's $500 a month, one that's 20 some thousand plus a year. Those you have to kind of, you know, massage and help the people into those, those pricing points, depending on where they are. Because if you overcharge somebody, they're going to quit on you in a year. Like I said, I'm looking for long, I'd rather get $200 a month from somebody every month that's then help them grow. And that eventually turn into 10,000 a year one day than to overcharge them and get $10,000 up front. Right? So I think pricing is relative to the value that you can convey. And again, if you have the, the, the mentality of relationship, you're going to build really solid relationships that people will be with you forever. I mean, I have, I have people that have been with me 15 years. Perfect. So you said in your story about, you know, your entrepreneurial journey that you spent several years in that I'm not really making any money space. Um, what do you think is the number one thing that keeps people stuck from really actually monetizing their business or their expertise? I think it's their own personal growth. I am not the person I was 14 years ago. 
right? I, you know, my health got better. My mental strength got better. The skills I've required, you know, reading two books a week, getting coaching. You know, I never believed in any of it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shock you, uh, Steve, but I joined Jeff Walker's mastermind. And the first time I ever went out to Jeff Walker to do a mastermind, I went to his event and all these people are like, JB, you need to join. You need to join. I mean, these great marketers. And I'm like, what's wrong with you people? Are you getting a commission? I really thought that, you know, and for two years, I got to know people on Facebook and stuff and watch them grow their businesses. And I said, you know what, maybe this mastermind thing isn't, isn't a joke. And, and one of the things that held me back a lot in my business was, you know, recognize the fact that maybe I needed to belong to some groups. Maybe I needed some coaching. And I really was against that. I was a little arrogant. I thought I could do it all alone. And that's really what shifted for me. And once I saw the value of that, that's when I started creating mine and offering it to my people because I was like, wow, this changed my life. So I think there's a little bit of, um, we get in our own way, you know, and, and, and you got to grow. I mean, it just takes time as an entrepreneur. I have multiple businesses now and invest and angel invest and help others. And really the first thing I look at is, is the person willing to grow? Are they, are they willing to go out there and add some skills uh, in order to, you know, magnify their earnings, because I know I needed to, to grow. I had an MBA and a PhD, corporate success, but, but the market is fickle. fickle. That, that, just because you have an MBA and a PhD doesn't mean somebody's going to pay you. You've got to really figure out, you know, your value prop and what you bring uniquely to the market in order to get paid. So let's, uh, let's be good teachers for the listeners. Um, give the person listening one piece of advice. What's one thing they could do today to build a higher level in their business? Well, one thing they can do to do today is, you know, make sure they subscribe to your, your podcast, Steve, and come and listen because you're having great people on, right? Um, and then, then stick with it. I think the biggest issue I have, and I'm coming out of a mastermind last week, we just had ours, is that there, people get so busy with things. So the stuff like listening to you and the things that are going to change their life in two to five years, they're not doing. Why? Because their hair's on fire and the day to day's caught up. So they're an entrepreneur or there's somebody that wants to be an entrepreneur at a job trying to break away, but then writing the book or learning how to build the course or listening to you keeps getting pushed off because their regular life takes on and all of a sudden one week becomes two weeks, becomes a month, becomes six months and they start feeling this guilt that nothing's happening. And the reason is, is they're not doing the daily activities or at least one daily activity that in two to five years is gonna change their life. And I think that would be the one thing I would say is just persist, get the information and make sure you're doing something every day. Don't let life just totally take over that it steals your dreams. And I see that happening to a lot of people. I really appreciate that, JB. So for people who want to go deeper with you, what, how can they connect, connect with you? Well, I have some, you know, I always do free resources. So I have a client acquisition blueprint that's free. I actually, you know, I see if I mentioned that I actually do some one-on-ones, you know, I do a couple a month and, and people fill out applications. And I try to get to everybody that I can and they can go find that out at morningcoach.com. And there's a forward slash, we're going to use thriving because I love that term. I love your name. And so uh, morningcoach.com forward slash thriving. And there's a ton of free giveaways on there and things that I, I can help people with because I'm, I'm all about value and value is what leads to uh, people building a real relationship with you. JB Glossinger, the morning coach. JB, I really appreciate you spending some time with us on the show today. Steve, it was awesome. It was awesome. And, and hopefully we can all stick together and keep building this audio community because I think it's where it's going and it's needed. You know, we need to keep changing the world and, and you're doing it, brother. Thank you for having me. I hope I gave you enough time to be able to feverishly write the notes that you made during this. If you need to, you know, rewind whatever you do um, and go back and listen to it again. So many great tips in this particular segment of the show. And I really hope that you found some things in there that are gonna really help you accelerate, help you as you're on this journey in life to living as a thriving entrepreneur. Here comes our next commercial break and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? 
over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to wehelpyouthrive.com, check us out, and find out how you can be a best-selling author today. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur as we talk to you today about your growth, your business, making your business massively impactful and having explosive growth in your business. Hope you got a lot out of the last segment and we're not done yet. We've got more for you. So let's jump right back into it. All of us as business owners have a universal thought. How do I grow my business? Not only how do I grow it, but how do I explode it? How can I make this business really expand? Well, let's talk about it today. To help us with that, I'm joined with Carl Gould. He's going to talk to you about ways of mastering business hyper growth strategies. Hey, Carl, how are you here? How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. How are you doing? Doing good, thanks. So tell us a little bit about your background. Who are you? Well, uh, born and raised in New Jersey, still here, still uh, living in the Garden State. Um, I started out my career in uh, landscaping and um, also as a home builder. I had a landscaping company, sold it, started, had a home building business and then sold that. And then, um, uh, but I, my, I found my passion by getting into coaching in the early 90s and uh, had a real passion for it. Um, and it was my side hustle, if you will, all through the 90s. And um, I sold my landscaping company, then I sold my construction company and launched the business that I have today in 2002. So I love the fact that I get to do my passion play. Perfect. Um, so tell us what is the secret to hyper growth in our business? Well, hyper growth, um, so the first thing you do is to, um, it's really important that you understand your pricing and how it relates to your clientele. So in other words, one of the first lessons I learned in business, which I was so happy about and so grateful for was, I remember, um, I remember the very first year I was in business in landscaping, I would listen and I would hear all of the objections, all of the complaints about the industry from all of my prospects. They would say, Carl, what's wrong with you people? You never show up on time. You don't, you know, you don't call back. You don't do this. You don't do that. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. If I get these things right, I'd be unstoppable in my business. I would just, I would so rock it. And, um, and so I made a, uh, I doubled down on what the complaints were about the industry. I took those complaints. I rolled them into my business plan. And then I promised to my clients and I gave them an option. I had a, a standard price based on what they were asking me for. And then I had the guarantee price. And I said to them, listen, in the guarantee option, if these items that you complained about ever happen to you, then um, I'll give you all your money back. And I had this money back guarantee based on the top complaints in the industry. And my business doubled every year for seven years until I sold it. I mean, it just took off like a rocket because I was addressing, I was addressing the key problems that my all of my uh, clients were having. So it was a uh, very eye-opening, great lesson. And I got that very early in my career and I've done that ever since. And by understanding what my clients, where their biggest pain was and attaching a premium offering to that, and then just letting them decide, do they want that? Do they not? Uh, it, was, it was tremendously successful uh, for me as a business. And uh, that was one of the biggest lessons that I, that I got and um, it was the key to my hyper growth all throughout my career. Mm, that's good stuff. So um, <laughs> listening to your customers, that, that's a novel concept that hasn't caught on yet, huh? 
<laughs> well, you know, fall in love with them because what, here's what happens. You get in the business because you are either a front of the house um, uh, business leader or you're a back of the house business leader. If you're a front of the house business leader, that means you, you know, you're very influential, you're outgoing, you're um, inspiring and charismatic, you're a sales and marketing person by, by, um, in your DNA, and you could sell ice to the polar bears. And so you, you're really good at understanding what the relationship is with the client. Or you're a back of the house business leader. In other words, you started out in business and you did a really good job for a friend. They referred you to another friend. You did a job for that friend. Hey, any friend of mine is a friend of yours. Do that job again. Now you have a circle of friends and your business has been friends selling to friends. And, but to hypergrow, you have to become strangers selling to strangers. But if you're a back, meaning you have to hire somebody who you don't know who's going to go out and, and, and get sales from a whole bunch of people you've never met. But if you're a back of the house leader, you likely um, are more fixated on the quality of your deliverable as opposed to the relationship with your client. It happens all the time. Tech firms, lawyers, accountants, engineers, architects, bankers, um, you know, uh, sound familiar, right? Um, these groups say, well, we've got the best products. If, you, we, if we build it, they will come. And that's not always the case. So you've got to be very, very careful. You've got to double down with the relationship with your clients. So um, you talk a little bit in some of the stuff that they prompted me with here about the most important ingredient in a pricing strategy. But here's the question I have for you. Um, how do we determine what level of an expert we are to know what we should charge for what we're doing, especially when you're talking coaching and things like that? Sure. Well, your expertise is based on what you accomplished, mostly, somewhat what you know, but really what you've done. All right, does that make sense? Like people care what you know, but they really care about what you've done. And, and that's, the, that's, the key, that's the key metric here. Based on what you've done, you know what the value of that is. So for example, if I, if I figured out a way to sell a luxury product, and that product is $500,000, and the, and the profit on a $500,000 sale is $100,000. Well, if I could teach you how to make $100,000, what's that worth? Well, if I can teach you to sell that $100,000 only once, then I could probably charge you eh, up to $20,000. So there's a five to one ROI. But if I could teach you how to sell that $500,000 item multiple times and you make $100,000 every single time for the rest of your life, hmm, now I could charge you a lot more than I were, was charging you before, right? So, all of it, so now I can set my price higher on that. I might be able to sell you that same program for $100,000 instead of $20,000 because I can teach you how to fish. I can teach you that luxury sale and that will benefit you for the rest of your life. As a matter of fact, I can even say, if you don't get your money back from the program by selling this half million dollar luxury item at a hundred thousand dollar profit in five years, you know, and you follow my system, I can give you your, your money back. Right? So I can set up that value proposition because I'm the expert in that one area. And then your key is to find out who wants to learn that expertise in that area. If I could show you how to sell a luxury item, who wants to learn how to sell a luxury item and go from there. Perfect. So I know a lot of times when we talk about, especially when we talk about really hyper growth strategies, there's always somebody that's currently going through the downtime in their business. Um, what do we yeah. say to people who, you know, they're not in growth mode, they're kind of more in shrink mode? Well, if they're, so there's a number of, <laughs> I know, yeah, that's a nice way to put it. Um, you know, death spiral, free fall, or shrink mode. I like that, Steve. That's really good. Um, so there's a number of reasons why you might be in shrink mode. And maybe it's because you're selling an outdated or obsolete product. 
you know, you're in, you're in long distance telecom sales. Yeah, that's a shrinking market. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was in, um, you know, in my construction company, I used to sell and build log homes. That's an extremely narrow niche in the state of New Jersey. As a matter of fact, 20 years ago, only 12 or so log homes were built in the state in any one year. So it wasn't a big market and, it, and they're not making any new land in the state of New Jersey. So that market's only going in one direction, which is down. Um, so if you, you might have that business, but let's assume it's not because your product's obsolete. If your business is shrinking, the first thing you need to look at is traffic and offer. In other words, traffic and offer. Do you have the right traffic, like the right ideal uh, client prospect? Are you talking to the right person? And is your offer still compelling to that person, right? Now that we're in the age of Amazon and the internet, a guarantee, for example, is no longer compelling. A risk, we are, live in the age of the risk reversal. Can you reverse the risk back onto the provider, not to the client? Meaning, if I'm not, um, if you're not totally satisfied and I can't, if I can't satisfy you, I'll not only give you all your money back, I'll come pick the product up and I'll, I'll, I'll take it away for you. And I'll give you a gift certificate to another, for, to the company of your choice um, for, to buy the product because I failed you. That's a risk reversal, right? So we live in that age now. So maybe you're shrinking because your guarantee is no longer compelling or your product features are no longer compelling or your packaging or your branding is no longer compelling. Look at the traffic, look at the offer, okay? Facebook had to switch, right? They had to pivot some years ago. It was a good pivot for them and they ended up making more money, but they realized that there more people than just college age kids were on Facebook and college age kids didn't want to be on anything where mom and grandpa were. So what did they do? They started to flee. What did Facebook needed? They needed a platform where parents weren't going to run to. Okay. So they bought Instagram. Okay. Now it's TikTok, right? And so as soon as the parents and the marketers move in, the kids move out. And the offer is no, like Facebook is no longer compelling to the college age kid. It's once you get out, start a job, you know, and you're, and you're, you know, going to high school reunions. Yeah, you're Facebook territory now, right? But not until that time. Steve, I'm happy to tell you my son who's in the army is 21 years old. He's now gotten a Facebook page. He's like, dad, I think I officially got old. I have a Facebook page, right? So yeah, I would look at that if you're shrinking. That's so funny that you bring that up because I actually got a notification on Facebook from my, she's like 34 now, year old daughter that said, um, you know, we've been friends for five years. <laughs> <laughs> five I years. Like, I never thought I'm, I'd have a streak that long. I think I met you just a couple of years before that, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. That's funny. So what are some practical things? Let's, let's be good teachers here. Let's give the listener something that they could do right now today to begin moving into hyper growth mode for their business. Okay, so um, first thing I would do is I would, um, first thing I would do is I would go out to my, um, all of my likes, fans, followers, subscribers, email list, contact list, any way that you do it. And first thing I would do is I would make a compelling offer. I would go out to them and I would take the top five complaints in the industry. I would, cr I would create a premium offering for my products and services, <coughs> a premium option. And I would say, look, based on all the feedback that we've gotten, I've created this new program. Who would like to hear more about it? And I would start moving my clientele and my prospects into my premium offering, okay? The, by doing that, it's not just that we're charging more and we're making more margin. You, that will happen. And that's a good thing to have happen. But more importantly, you are going to be addressing the top concerns that passionate people about your product and service are interested in. That's going to start to attract some notice from your current clients, from your prospects. You're going to start getting some buzz where you didn't have that buzz before. 
Okay. So I would do a little research, find out what is my ideal client profile. And I'm assuming you all out there have an ideal client profile and an ideal client profile is not men 18 through 64 women 18 through, you know, 50, 49. That's not a demographic. You got to hone it in more, but you have an ideal client profile. What keeps them up at night? Question number one. Question number two, what do they feel guilty about or get yelled at for when they arrive home at the end of the day? Number three, what is going on in their life right now or in their business right now that, that makes calling you a must right now? And whatever your answers are to those three questions, you start blogging, podcasting, posting all about those items, and then lead them to, uh, lead them to a, uh, a link or a strategy session or a discovery meeting where you talk to them about your premium service that addresses that, those very needs. That's where I would start. That's good stuff. So Carl, people who would like to get a little handholding, go deeper with you, how can they get in touch with you? Well, uh, if you go to carlgould.com, C-A-R-L-G-O-U-L-D.com, uh, they can uh, find me there. And I'd like to offer a gift to your listeners. Um, if you go to carlgould.com or to our, our other website, our business website, uh, seven stage advisors.com, the number seven stage advisors.com. And in either case, go to the contact us page and we'll do what's called a business analysis, right? Business analysis in the subject line. And we will spend two hours with you and give you a growth advisory session and show you five ways to grow your business. Um, and that will be a deep dive into your company. And then if you think there's a way that we can help you from there, well, we'll figure that out as we go. Wow, that's good stuff. That's a really nice gift. I appreciate that. Happy to do it. Uh, Carl Gould, I've been speaking with. He has a way to help you hypergrow your business. And I hope you will, will really check his stuff out. Carl, thanks so much for spending some time with us on the radio today. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Steve. I love having amazing guests that can come and pour into you making your world, your life a better place, showing you things that they've learned so that you can maybe, you know, avoid a couple of the potholes in the road. You can live a better life. You can live as a thriving entrepreneur. I really do love it when I hear from you and when I see those kind of things. If you have any comments about the uh, guests, feel free to post hashtag thriving entrepreneur on your favorite social media. We would love to hear about the things that you're getting uh, from the different guests that we have. We love to have uh, and hear from you. We're going to take our last quick commercial break and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to We Help youthrive.com check us out and find out how you can be a best selling author today welcome back to thriving entrepreneur this is Steve welcome back so uh, today here on thriving entrepreneur we have talked to you about growth about yes growing enough as a person that you're ready to be able to grow as a business, having the right focus so that you are doing the things that will help you grow your business, and really 
having your heart and soul in the right place so that as your business grows, you're doing the best good that you can do in the world. Because I know you, and I know that you're going to just do more good in the world. I love being able to come to you each week with another message that talks about how you can live in everything you do in life. You can live as a thriving entrepreneur. A lot of you know that you have a message that just like the guests I had today and all the other authors that I've shared with you over the years, you have a message that needs to be shared with the world. And something's holding you back. For those of you that are listening live, you know there's a bunch of things going on both here in our country as well as internationally that it's real easy to give in to the fear. What if I get sick? What if one of my family members gets sick? And all of those kind of things. There's a great saying, um, and I love uh, that Sid Bauman taught this to me. The saying is, control what you can and don't worry about what you can't control. You can work hard. You can have yourself set up so that you can work from home if you need to. You can put that story out into the world so that you can be reaching people 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Your book can be selling to somebody. I mean, think about somebody who's maybe quarantined in China right now and has time that they'd like to read and they have a need for exactly what your book is all about or would be. Now, here's the thing. If you don't have the book out there, they'll find something, they'll read something and you know, maybe they'll get a little bit of help, maybe they won't. But if they could read your thing, those bad decisions they've been making, that thing they've been looking for help for, they could get it. Even in the midst of crisis, there is opportunity. There is so much good going on. And I know you. I know that you want to be part of the good that's happening in the world. So do what you can do today. Take that next step. If you have thought about wanting to write a book and you haven't joined us yet, of course, go to bestsellersguild.com and join us. If you're already in there, you know, and you have a book or you're working on a book, let's get together, let's talk. Go to asksteveKid.com and schedule a time to be able to talk to me. Let's get you clarity. You know, I mean, maybe doing your book is the thing you need to do right now and maybe something else is. Wherever you're at, clarity is powerful. And then when you have that, you can show up as the best version of yourself while it's called today. Because remember, you are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose and the world needs you. Please know I'm here for you. I want you to be clear, powerful, and growing to the best of your ability every day of your life as you live out your life as a thriving entrepreneur. Until next time, I hope that you are growing and that you have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. You've heard Kathy and I talk about it. You've seen the workshops. You have watched as others of your friends have become a best-selling author. And now it's your turn. Let me ask you this. What would being a best-selling author do for your business? Over 80% of people surveyed said that they want to write a book, which means that if you're listening, you probably are one of those people. Now is your time because you have a message that needs to be shared. That message is not for you. It's not for your ego. It is because 
it serves other people. Kathy and I are here to help you share your unique brilliance with the world. All you need to do is go to wehelpyouthrive.com, check us out, and find out how you can be a best-selling author today.